The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. A small boy, forbidden by his parents to swim in the local river on his way home back from school, was discovered by his mother in his room with damp hair, studiously working at his homework. Now, enthusiasm for arithmetic assignments never figured largely in the boy's late afternoon activity. Did you go swimming after school today? His mother asked. The boy nodded and then added, but mom, I couldn't help it. Satan tempted me. Really? His mother said. She persisted. Well, how come you had your swimming shorts with you? Oh, the boy said, I took them along just in case he tempted me. <laughs> After his baptism, St. Luke tells us, Jesus was led into the desert by the Spirit to be tempted by the devil. At the end of his 40-day fast in the wilderness, when he is famished, exhausted, and vulnerable, Jesus then encounters the devil. It came as no surprise to Jesus that he would be tempted to satisfy his hunger by turning stones into bread. But had he not been sent to satisfy the hungers of the world on God's holy word? It came as no surprise to Jesus 
that he would be tempted to gather followers for his mission in the world by performing feats of religious display, by jumping off the tower of the temple and being rescued by angels. But had he not been sent to bring others into a kingdom not of this world, a kingdom of holiness, love, and peace. It came as no surprise to Jesus that he would be tempted to forego suffering and pain, to take a shortcut to bringing the world back to the true God by worshiping a false God. But had he not been sent to bear witness to the truth, even if it meant offering his life for the salvation of the world. Temptations come more often than not when we, like Jesus, are in the midst of a desert experience. And by that I mean an experience where it appears that much of our support is gone, that there is nothing to hold on to, perhaps an experience of utter loneliness or of being lost or adrift or an experience of an uncertain future or an experience of devastation or loss. I think, for example, of those who are unemployed and have been looking for work without success. The desert experience of being without a job, of being filled with confusion, resentment, and an utter sense of failure. I think of graduating seniors who are fearing that all too soon they will have to leave their friends and this place they have come to know and love these past four years, who find themselves filling out applications, going for job interviews, waiting for letters and acknowledgments. But what will the future bring? Will it bring happiness? The desert experience of an unknown future, of soon feeling isolated from close friends and familiar places, can seem overwhelming, just too much to handle. Perhaps a loved one, a spouse, a parent or grandparent, a sibling or a close friend, is suffering from some terrible disease or accident and is not expected to live or has recently died. In such times, the desert experience of devastation and loss Emptiness and unbearable pain can be overwhelming. And the temptation is to find a quick fix. Desert experiences touch all of our lives, and with them come temptations for escape. Of all the temptations, there is one that is most evil. It is not sex or alcohol or cheating. It is not power or riches or glory promised to Jesus by the tempter. The evil of all temptations is nothing less than despair a despair that comes from deciding to let go of God, 
or thinking that God has let go of us. The despair that comes from deciding to let fear of the future rule my life rather than trust. The despair that comes, for example, from deciding not to love when a loved one has been taken away. The temptation to give up on God. The temptation to no longer believe in God. Desert experiences are all too frequent. But for the person of faith, one can recenter and renew one's hope in God's compassionate promise of new life in, through, and with Jesus. To say with St. Paul today that Jesus is Lord is to put him at the center of our life and to recognize in Jesus the source of our trust and strength now and always. Temptations of the sort that confronted Jesus are with us at every turn. But victory and salvation are within our grasp if we but turn to him, especially in this Lenten season, through our fasting, almsgiving, and prayer, especially in the Eucharist and in sacramental reconciliation. As St. Paul reminds us today of Jesus, no one who believes in him will be put to shame.